I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do stand in the way of what I can do. My name is Jason Allen Edgecombe the first. <laughs> when I was six years old, my parents took me on a trip across Canada to my uncle's wedding. At the reception, I was seated at a table with five other adults, none of whom I knew. At some stage, my uncle came over, and we had a lovely conversation about marine biology. You heard me. He, 45, an avid diver for much of his life, myself, six years old, having watched the Discovery or a program on the Discovery Channel two weeks previous. For the duration of our conversation, which lasted about three and a half hours, <laughs> the five other adults sat there and stared and said nothing. So amazed were they to hear a child speak as clearly and eloquently as I do for you today. In 1997, my teachers had concerns. My parents shared them, and our doctor referred us to a specialist in North London where they administered a pediatric early education examination. It was a test which I could only fail. The PWX test is an assessment designed to determine how well a child will excel in a mainstream school environment, such as the public school which I attended for much of my early life. The results were provided to my parents. Mr. and Mrs. Edgecombe, we're very sorry to have to tell you this, but your son has a mental disability. He has what's called attention deficit disorder. And they said, well, what does that mean? And the specialist said, well, he will struggle to form bonds and make friendships. Probably be alone most of his life. He will struggle to succeed in school or any academic area. Probably won't go to college or university. Likely will never gain full-time meaningful employment once he does reach adulthood. And then they did something worse. They told the exact same thing to me. I wanted to tell you today about the people who tortured me. But I made a decision not two hours ago that I wasn't going to do that. What I'm going to tell you is how when I was a child I cried myself to sleep at night, believing that I was a monster. A hateful, spiteful beast. Because why else would the teachers punish me when other kids beat me up? Why else would everyone hate me so much unless I deserved it? And so I cried and I said, Jay, what did you do to those people? Never figured it out. But I hated myself. Because all those people couldn't be wrong. All those children, all those adults, these highly educated individuals, they couldn't be wrong. Who was I to say that they were wrong? And so I punished myself. I hit myself, I insulted myself, screamed at myself, did everything you can think of. I used to say that I'd be punished three times for every failure in school, once by the teacher, 
once by my parents, and finally, by myself. I'm 26 years old, and in a lot of ways that still hasn't stopped. <coughs> I am not actually attention deficit disorder. I'm actually something which is referred to as high-functioning autistic, which is a completely different kettle of fish. <laughs> My self-image is entirely externally generated. So when I viewed myself as a monster, there were two voices in my head. Still are today, right now, although they're not very loud right now. The voice of failure, which says, Jay, you're going to fail. And you're going to let down all the people you care about. And they are going to suffer because you didn't do good enough. The other is the voice of success, which, in a phrase, goes, you got this! Until very recently, these voices were not even. The voice of failure screamed at me. It was like a whirlwind in my ear. I couldn't think without hearing it. Sometimes I couldn't think at all. All I heard was failure. The voice of success was so quiet. So, so quiet. That I could barely hear it in the stillness of a fall breeze. Is it any wonder that I approached every task with the belief that I would fail? Early in my life, I sought an escape, a way out from this bombardment of hate that I gave myself. I turned to the digital world. I turned to video games. And from these digital constructs, I have learned the most important lessons that I have ever learned. I will share two of them with you today. This is Link from The Legend of Zelda or Karina of Time. He's a 10-year-old fairy boy who I realized is on the spectrum. <laughs> Go figure. He is tasked with a giant talking tree, by a giant talking tree, sorry, with saving the land of Hyrule from an evil wizard of incalculable power. To achieve this, he is given a butter knife and a wooden shield. Thank you. Those will be very handy. Link's task is impossible. He, he can't do this. Nobody can do this. Shouldn't even try. But he does anyway. Miserably fails. And he goes, well, fine, I'll go deal with this then. Goes and fixes this little problem. Goes and fixes this other problem. Goes and deals with this. Fixes that. Helps these people. Gains experience, knowledge, items, equipment. Becomes more powerful. And eventually, he defeats Ganon and brings peace to Hyrule. Watching Link, I learned that you do not have to succeed the first time. They recommended 12 coping strategies to help me succeed in school. No mainstream environment in the world could have followed through with them. And so they medicated me on a drug designed to dumb down children with ADD. And then they expected me to succeed brilliantly because they said ADD children are actually quite intelligent. So, you should be able to get 95, 90% easy. Cheers. And so when they punished me for not instantly succeeding at a task when I had no prior training or experience with it, I went back to this. And I started to tell myself, that's okay. Practice. Try. 
slightly more violent. This is the Master Chief Petty Officer John 1117. He is a genetically and cybernetically enhanced super soldier of the United Nations Space Command military. A little bit of a mouthful. He is tasked with saving mankind from an advanced alien conglomerate bent on our extinction. His task has already failed. Mankind is on the edge of eradication. The Covenant is about to unleash a superweapon which will eradicate all life in the galaxy. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing anyone can do. He tries anyway. He does not allow the odds before him to daunt him. Legions of alien warriors with advanced technology, battleships, and a superweapon older than human history do not stop him from trying to save humanity. And consequently, all the alien races that are trying to kill him. I always loved that irony. And the funniest thing is, he succeeds. Stops the superweapon and saves countless trillions of lives. I have faced so many challenges in my life. And I'll be honest, I failed most of them. You cannot expect a child on a drug that inhibits appetite and sleep patterns to do well in sports. No more than you can expect a car to run without fuel. You people got angry at me when I was a bit at soccer. Nobody thought to look at my environment and see how it was affecting my ability to perform. They always just blamed me. Jay, you should have done better in math. And you didn't do better because you weren't trying hard enough. <coughs> never mind that I had a math teacher who never spoke to me and wouldn't answer any of my questions. Never mind that my parents decided to take me on a trip to England for two weeks in the middle of a math class that I was failing. And never mind that I'm really not a math person. I should have done better. Video games cannot save your life. They're data, zeros and ones in an artificially constructed environment. But the games I played and the lessons I learned gave me the inspiration to change who I was. Didn't know how. How does, a, how does an eight-year-old know how to change their life? Honestly, they don't. But they can make that choice to change. And I did. I studied martial arts and learned to quiet my mind and hear the voice of success for the first time. I did leadership programs in my native home, which helped boost my confidence and teach me techniques to reach out to people. I found love, and I moved across the world to a country which is much more tolerant of individual differences than my homeland. And ultimately, I made the decision within myself not to hate who I am because society tells me that I do not conform, but to love who I am for just that. This is Taya Elizabeth Edgecombe, the first. She is my daughter, and she was born on Monday. When I look at her, I cannot help but wonder what people will say that she cannot do. Thank you.